Samia's show. I don't even have a name for my show. What do I call it? It's just like, but well, we've been doing a lot of interviews lately and um, they've been really amazing. Um, I feel like talking to people gives you a different insight mm -hmm. rather than just me talking about myself. So today I have Abdul. Abdul is in the US. He's a Taiwanese Muslim convert, ex-Muslim. That's quite a handful, quite a mouthful actually. Yeah. Uh, how's it going, uh, Abdul? It's good, good. It's good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And share the story with all you guys, and yeah. And um, let's let's start with this. Um, what motivated you to share your story? Like, why why did you want to do this? Well, um, after um, hearing countless of stories of ex-Muslims and how they share their stories, and I thought it was pretty good for me to also deliver my story to inform other Muslims or any other, anyone who is interested in Islam and just want to let you guys be sort of aware and, you know, sort of think for yourself and have critical thinking, like, is this Islam really true? And really just to give yourself some concern, just to think, mm -hmm. but for following, what, whatever you're following, are you just blindly following? Are you really actually understanding? So that's what sort of motivates me to share my story and also seeing a east asian person being a muslim a lot of you might be also curious and wanting to hear my story so i thought I'd just share some story with you guys absolutely now before we get into your story um can we talk a little bit about why did you decide to do this um anonymously like to not show your face like what do you want to share the, with the reasons why you felt that way because i think i think this is important actually that you're doing this and i also think it's important to highlight how difficult this is and like why why did you decide to not show your face oh the reason why i didn't want to show my face is um definitely i don't want to show myself just yet i want to just keep everything quiet for some for a period of time but i want I want to deliver my message so, like I said earlier, people can think for themselves and understand if they're following, if they're just blindly following their religion or not. So that's the main reason why I chose to stay silent. It's just to keep it quiet for a while, and then. And also, there is obviously some risk involved in doing this, which I a think a little bit, yeah, yeah, which the is like it's maybe not as much considering that I'm an. I am just a revert, a convert. Yeah. And I don't, luckily, I don't have to deal with any family situation because my family isn't even Muslim. Yeah. But I have to deal with peer and other social situation. That's what I'm more concerned. Yeah. However, I think it's not really a big deal just in case. I just want to keep it a little bit quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah absolutely fair enough fair enough so yeah we all we all have different situations and it's not always possible for us to come out publicly mm -hmm. and um you know deal with all of the ramifications that can come all of a sudden so that's that's yeah. fair um so do you want to tell us about how you uh you know how did you find out about islam yeah so um it was uh in high school that time i was really curious about religion i had some um uh, Christian knowledge background from my grandparents. They converted to Christianity back in, I mean, my, my grandfather converted to Christianity back in 2014. So I would often get to go to church and to listen to the preachers preach about Bible. And I found that, hey, this is really different from what I grew up with. Well, growing up in Taiwan, we're mostly Buddhists and Taoists. So Christianity, like, you know, Islam, Abrahamic religions is a new concept to me in terms of the God and heaven and hell. So I was really, really curious about Abrahamic religions. I sort of did look into Islam, but it wasn't as deep dive. So I first look at Christianity as I said, I can, I was able to experience Christianity on the early on. And I find Christianity to be pretty fascinating. Pretty what? Pretty fascinating. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I didn't make my mind yet. I was just like, let's not make decisions this quick because I want to also explore other religions. Mm -hmm. So I was looking to 
you know, like I listen to multiple of uh, religious scriptures and religious devotional music, and I found Hinduism to be pretty interesting as well. And of course, I become Buddhist back again back in 2017, 2016, 2017, and then <laughs> I went to, and then after that, I actually went deep dive into Islam. I started to study Islam in the summer of 2017. But again, it was just minor study. I didn't really deep dive into. I was having a lot of questions, and I wasn't asking questions just yet. Twenty eighteen is really, really when I start to really, really deep dive into Islam. I was introduced to MSA back in MSA is like a Muslim student organization. Yeah. It's a school where they held meeting every Friday and they give khutbah and they pray the mosque and salah. So. I went there one time and I really like it. I was just like, man, praying Salah sort of gives me a different experience back then. I feel like this is something very mystical and very, it sort of gives me like a different personal feeling. So I was really, really, really intrigued by it. And then from there, I was just been involved in, really involved in MSA. And then I even fast the 2018 summer, Ramadan. And then I was just like, wow, this is so good, so cool be able to fast and experience different things and experience hunger and that makes you appreciate food even more and then i just spent the rest of the year basically talking to muslims asking muslims questions and just watching islamic lectures and da'wah and you know different muslim apologetics on talking about quran and then the, really the concept of jesus is what makes me really really like islam compared to Christianity back when I was practicing back when I was a Muslim because in Christianity they view Jesus as son of God or even God whereas in Islam Jesus is a prophet so that makes sense to me you know as someone who's looking into monotheism how can a man be God and how can one man's life save all mankind you know so I was just like Islam knock that down and organize that in a very very straightforward way like you just pray to allah and you follow messenger and muhammad and yeah you just follow the five pillars of islam and it's as simple as that so you know towards the end of 2018 my friend my good friend was like you know hey Actually, you should just become a Muslim because I think you're very ready for Islam. You know a lot about Islam already. So January is when I become a Muslim. January of 2019, I was a senior in high school. And I took my Shahada in January. And then after that, I received a lot of congrats. <laughs> and I was, just, I was really deep dive into Islam. And I was just wanted to read the Quran. But I was told that, hey, you know, you should read Quran in Arabic. Because if you read Arabic Quran, you get like higher rewards or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for me, I was just like, you know, I have no one really to teach me. Yeah. And I was busy with school and college applications and taking care of my business. So I didn't really focus too much on Quran and Hadith. I was just following the basic, basic pillar, like praying the Salah and try to pray on time basically that's all i was doing and then try to memorize some surahs so i start with surah al fatiha that's the one that i actually remember by heart right now i don't really remember any other surahs of the quran so were you leading the, the prayer in arabic like you were doing the yeah, yeah. you're doing so, the proper prayer oh, okay uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, surah al fatiha yeah and surah al ikhlas and hmm. that's pretty much it and yeah. i memorized the other surah yeah but, but i did memorize it and as I was memorizing, I feel sort of special. Like I, I was telling about when I was praying Salah at um, MSA, that same feeling. But a year later, sort of like when I was really into Islam, I was starting to wonder something as well. And my friend, my two friends who was an ex-Muslim, I'm not going to mention their names for privacy reasons. One was a, a Sunni, one was an Ismaili. So were, you had two ex-Muslim friends. Uh, you had two. So Sunni means like he was an ex-Muslim, but he was a Sunni ex-Muslim. Yeah, yeah. And the other guy was an Ismaili ex-Muslim. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they were um, 
they were they're my friend they were been around me for quite a while and i was actually rooming in with the ex sunni muslim and uh he got kicked out because he left islam his dad so it's like he got know, kicked like, out of his house yeah oh yeah for for leaving islam and he was telling me why he left islam and i was sort of listening to his story and then it sort of gives me some kind of feeling i was just in that at that time i didn't really think i was like bro this guy is just mis misguided you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah and all that you know yeah. just train a lot and all that stuff like how some some people might think of me right now how <laughs> <laughs> tables have turned eh? yeah yeah, yeah. for the ex smiley guy i was just like this guy wasn't even muslim so i was <laughs> kind of listening to him it's just he just doesn't know islam you know yeah he really study islam like how many smiles do you know that actually read quran and yeah. pray to Allah, you know so i was just like oh, i'm not gonna listen to him i just ignore him ignore so him. In, in my case i'm both combined i'm ex smiley and ex sunni <laughs> <laughs> you could say that yeah yeah although yeah. like i didn't become ex smiley atheist i became ex smiley and i converted to sunni so yeah that's the difference in my case yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, so Definitely. so these guys told you not to be muslim well they sort of warned me and they sort okay. of gave me reasons to why as to why i shouldn't be a muslim as to why i shouldn't join islam because of the quality that's been promoted in islam and there are some things in the quran and how muhammad was whatever he did you know like especially the case with aisha and other things as well so i was sort of warned but I didn't really think too much. But then my faith was also inconsistent too. Like at first beginning, it was like the hard time, like, or like the most practicing time. And then as it starts to get into the year of 2019 of summer, I was sort of, what I sort of have some doubts as well, but I was just like, no, this is just shaitan trying to get me out. Don't listen to it, Shaitan. I was just reciting oh do billah, do billah, and you know, just like, hey, no, don't worry, don't listen to Shaitan. <laughs> Shaitan tries to make you leave Islam. Don't worry. It's just yeah, misguidance. I was praying. That's why I it makes me pray even more. Like pray to Allah and Allah will guide you and silence Shaitan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then I move from that city back to the city that I'm in right now. So after I move here and I'm with, with and I'm with my parents around my parents more because when I was in high school I used to live by myself because I wanted to finish my high school in the city that I'm in right now and my parents living in another city. So I moved there with them to meet them after my graduation and I was there I sort of I was a I was also not around Muslim communities as well. So if you're not around Muslim, that tends to make you less religious. That's what I've heard and mm -hmm. my experience with that as well. And, but I was still practicing for sure. I was like, you know, even though I'm far away from the Muslim communities, I wasn't able to go to the masjid and Jumu'ah Salah. I still practiced by myself at home and then I found masjid in the city that I moved to. So I was still connected with Muslims, but when I moved back to the city that I'm in right now, like, as I said, and I started to have doubts. That doubt really came up. The doubt from my two good friends who was an ex-Muslim, that doubt really came to my mind. I was just like, you know, the faith that I'm really following, is it really, really, really the true faith? So I think I've spent next, two months thinking about it and that's and the most important thing most important reasons is actually right now <laughs> i'm about to mention mm -hmm. nothing related to sunnah or quran or anything it's just one friend that i i made and we don't talk anymore because of some personal reasons and some problems with him we stopped the talking and he was an example of actual muslim he was a Salafi Wahhabi, like the hardcore one. And being around him makes me really, really doubt my faith even, even, even more. As the stuff that he was saying, you know, he was saying like, you know, you shouldn't greet your neighbors. You shouldn't be around non-Muslims. I, I sort of, I know that already, yeah. but 
it wasn't too much of a problem for me. I actually was like this. I, I was cutting off non-Muslims from my social circle. I was actually doing that on my social media. Like, you know, this guy is a kufar, this guy is a kufar. I'm not going to really associate that much with them. So, you know, I wasn't really like that. I was I was also like that, and I didn't think too much of it. I was like, you know, this is good. Non-Muslims are impure. I don't like kufars. <laughs> <laughs> but then... When yeah, I the Quran it. itself says that, right? The Quran yeah, yeah, yeah. Says, you know, al kafirun al right? Don't take the the kafirun as olia, which is yeah. translated either as protectors or friends or allies. Yeah. Companionship, yeah. Basically. Yeah, olia is basically like um, you know, close friends or you know, mm -hmm. connect uh, protectors, and. This this theme, you know, Salafis, uh, <laughs> they're like most they 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 materialize this most most clearly. They're like, yeah, wala and bara, kufar and yeah. Muslims, and even though we're living in a non-Muslim country, somehow that doesn't click in the mind that like you know we need to work together. But somehow it's it's always about you know us versus them, right? Exactly, and yeah. you. So you got this sort of vibe from from the Quran itself, or just from this guy, and this is what caused you doubt. You said, "Well, first it was Quran, like this verse actually, and then I was sort of implying that rules, and then I don't have real life ex person experience until I've been around this guy and listened to what he said, and that's what makes me start to realize, hmm. So this is this is what real life experience Muslim actually do, and other Muslims I've been around, quite a handful of other Muslims that I've been around are actually like this as well. That's what's started to make me doubt Islam. I haven't leave my faith at that time mm -hmm. yet. But okay. my doubt was really, really getting stronger and bigger. But, but why did this make you doubt? What's you the know, problem with this? Because I thought, you know, staying away from the infidels, like what they said, eventually causes leave, leaving the fold of Islam and potentially doing something very harmful. Like they said, they would sort of they will kill the you know, idolaters meaning people who worship idols like i was <laughs> like but, Buddhism, but, so what i'm what i'm trying to get at is yeah did you feel like this this was an immoral teaching this is a bad teaching or a, what how did how did this become a problem for you like why did this become a problem for you like for me when i read this you know, believe it or not, I can mm -hmm. like you know I converted to Sunni Islam. So before mm -hmm. that, I never read the Quran because mm -hmm. Ismailis, for the most part, they don't really care too much about Quran. Uh -huh. When I and I started reading the Quran by Yusuf Ali, I had this big, thick Yusuf Ali translation of the Quran yeah. that my dad had, and he got from one of my um, bookshop as well. Actually, oh yeah. yeah, and and when I got to this ayah and I was reading from beginning to end, I was like, you know, I was again reading the Yusuf Ali translation. Let not the believers take for friends or helpers unbelievers rather than believers. Okay, if you if if any do that, in nothing will there be help from Allah. Okay, mm -hmm. so except except if you want to take a precaution, it says. So, I asked my mom. My mom was Sunni Muslim, right? And mm -hmm. I'm like, what is this? Like, mm -hmm. I'm, this is like when I was a new Muslim, like I don't know, twenty years ago or something, right? Like, mm -hmm. I was like, what is this saying? Like, I don't get it. Why is it saying this? Like it to me, it didn't click in my mind. I didn't understand, right? I didn't think of it as okay. This ayah came to um, you know Muhammad's companions in Medina, and this was very specific for their situation where they were having a battle between you know Mecca and Medina, and you know the Kufa and this and that, and you know very hostile situation. Somehow this has become some universal teaching. This yeah. these these this book has become universally taught now that it's full of wisdom for all of exactly. eternity and all of mankind. Whereas it doesn't even make sense, right? I mean, to me, that was how I took it. Now, is that is that what happened mm -hmm. to you as well? Sort of, and moreover, it's more of an immoral teachings. Like you don't see this in other religions. Like they're not as xenophobic as Islam. Mm -hmm. Like for example, Christian says. You should love your neighbor, even your enemies. Like that's what I was been told about Christianity. And oh, yeah. that's actually true. I actually <laughs> remember with my grandparents. That's before a few days I've left Islam. I was asking my grandparents countless of questions. And they're actually wanted to me to become Christian. <laughs> but now that I've left Islam, I'm not really interested in Abrahamic religions. But I'll get into that in a little bit. First I wanna just focus on this what, you know, other than immorals, I also think that this is 
this sort of limited you from also achieving your potentials. Because if you're so like xenophobic and not wanted to be around non-Muslims, you're not really going to get anywhere that far, especially living in the U.S. This is where this is not a Muslim country, right? And if this is what this religion teaches, then I don't really understand how is this religion spreading so fast? Because yeah. Yeah. Buddhism and Hinduism and Taoism and and other religions like Jainism, Sikhism, Christianity, they were not. They never ask you to stay away from non-Muslims or infidels. That's what. Yeah. It's called. yeah. So that, that really makes me start to wonder and think a lot about Islam. Mm -hmm. mm. Not as I don't view as much as anymore. And then also not be able to practice my culture because I was told by my some Muslim friends, like, hey, you shouldn't celebrate Chinese New Year. You shouldn't have all these, you know, um, calligraphies, Chinese calligraphies around and what else um i have some um trigonometry thing hanging on my, in front of my door it's like a, a do you know anything about um not yin yang it's not yin yang what is that called feng shui it's like our pra cultural folk practice like okay since our, our house is in the t section mm -hmm. we like to put on the uh, lock like the protector evil protector and that friend who i was talking about came to my house and he said you should take this off you know you should throw all your incense away yeah, yeah this one okay this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah we in uh chinese culture taiwanese culture yeah this is like very um it's like a big deal yeah to a lot of taiwanese folks they type they like to hand this in front of their house to protect themselves from evil so the evils won't enter the house basically it's like mm -hmm. a book practice yeah so that guy he stole this he came to my house and he saw this he says bro you should take this down this is encouraging evil eyes <laughs> <laughs> the are the, the, the basically yeah i was like what what is what are you saying like yeah it, i didn't know all this I, I i know it but i i wasn't a critical thinker like i said i became a critical thinker and then to me this has just started to become ridiculous like what what is this religion teaching <laughs> yeah so that's the problem right when people convert to islam they don't realize this this is like kind of like the dark side yeah and we talked about this in my past my previous stream that when you become muslim like suddenly there's it's not just like you've you adopted some spiritual practice which you have you yeah. also have all of these obligations that are like put upon you like oh you work in the music industry oh you gotta quit your job yeah, oh, yeah. you you uh exactly. you have these things like, in your house i'll stock for the law you have paintings you have photos you have pictures yeah. and you have this cultural thingies and oh no no no, no you can't have that that's just yeah exactly so then that's when i was started to feel very distasteful so it's like man why i'm just practicing my culture it's not anything against Allah, you know, I'm not <laughs> worshiping other gods or I'm not, it's not like I'm having Buddha or my ancestors there. So I ven venerate them, worship them. I actually do that right now, but, but when I was a Muslim, I would, I never do that. Yeah. So I was like, what's wrong with having, you know, Chinese, Asian, Asian culture thing in the background? I don't understand. So that's what really makes me feel tired. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some some guy just comments Shen Sui. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so 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 that happened. So the Salafi guy came over and he was telling you oh, all these things. Um yeah. and then what happened? So then what so this made you have some doubt. Yeah, yeah. But doubt was sort of I was like, you know, maybe I should leave Sunni Islam and maybe become other Muslim. Mm -hmm. So I was a non-dimensional non Muslim. I was just like easy modern Muslim for a couple of months. So, and it's under the quarantine as well. <laughs> so just been thinking about Islam and non-dimensional Muslims and having doubts about it too. And then even then, as I was thinking, I was just like, you know, if I can, if those practices aren't, good and the quran has some dark side and the practices is just not appealing and it's not very some of them are very immoral so then it made me to realize there is no point of being a muslim 
in anymore, even if Islam were to go through reformation. Okay, let's say that Islam gets passed off out like, okay, like Christians went through reformation, whereas they focus more on love rather than just, you know, hey, strict following doctrines, you know, love, love your neighbors, just like Christian says, love your neighbors. And if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. Let's just say if Islam get to that point, it's still not going to change the fact what Prophet Muhammad did. So, you and know, what did, he, what then, did he do? Like, what do you mean? Well, specifically? see, um, pedophilia is the biggest one that actually stocks in my mind. Like, how can a person of 50 something age be around a child who's not even reaches puberty? This is what makes me really, really wonder, you know, and other stuff as well, like forced conversion, had a sex slave and had multiple wives and forces religion upon others and kills so many, many people in Medina and Mecca mm -hmm. and yeah. anywhere around his neighborhood. And just basically how he got ideas from other faith that was been that was present in the time of pre-Islamic Arabia. So this is what I came to a conclusion. If our prophet can even do certain things and he was not being a very good role model for humanity, then obviously his followers are not going to follow him, you know, take him very seriously. And to most Muslims, they don't really think about it. To, to them, they're just more of an identity. So they have those saying of, oh, I am a Harami, I am a halal person. <laughs> yeah. So then, halal boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So then I was just like, what is all this? This is not pointless. If this is if this if our greatest figure of all time can't even do it, then how can you expect your followers to do it? So obviously, this religion is false. This prophet is false. And reading Quran, you also don't realize you also do realize that this is really not the word of Almighty. Because mm -hmm. every everyone, even if you're they're not Muslim, not Christian, even if they're not following any specific religion. They always says this, God is love, right? God is moral. If you do believe in God, God is about moral and God, people with religion, they won't do bad things. But Islam is different from other religions because like I said, I just made, I like the qualities that I mentioned and what the prophet did. Mm -hmm. When did you find out about all these things about Islam, about what the prophet did? And you know, how well, did you find out after you became Muslim? Or was it like, did you just come up with excuses why it was okay at that time? How well, did you see, handle that? Like those other things that I mentioned about Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't know any of those. Oh. Yeah. I know I I knew he was a pedophile. And other stuff I wasn't too sure about it. I was just like, maybe this is just some Islamophobes. So then, <laughs> You're using that yeah. word, Islamophobes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people who are against Islam and, and they hate Muslims. And that's what I was thinking. But then I justified the situation with Aisha. I was just like, you know, people from back then, it's okay for them to do that because it's like a cultural practice. So that's what I was thinking. That's what my thought was, you know, it, was a, it wasn't a big deal. It was just time, you know, we're in a different time, we're in modern time. So this is not acceptable in 21st century. Yeah. Like, and yeah. and I, I think, you know, that's to be clear, I, the, the marriage to a child, it was very common back then. And, yeah. you know, not to make excuses for it, it's definitely wrong. Yeah. But it's less wrong back then, which is why you don't find any of the, you know, opponents of Prophet Muhammad mentioning that he did this. It's yeah. more wrong now because we've learned that you know these things are wrong. We learned we didn't they don't they didn't even have an idea of consent. There's no there's no such concept of consent mm -hmm. in Islam. There's that the idea is just missing. So we've evolved a morality and we understand that children cannot consent. We understand that um, you know that you need to be you know basically physically able at you know at a certain yeah. you, children cannot you know there's a lot of dangers of child marriage for example um like in africa a lot of young women get pregnant and then they they the baby can't come out and they get what's called a fistula where there's yeah. like a hole that rips up inside them and then the all of the you know mm -hmm. excrement it just comes out you know and they and what happens is they can't hold they can't go to the washroom properly they have to 
and it causes a lot of all of this because of child marriage. So we've learned all of these things and we know it's wrong. The problem right. is when people say Muhammad is a perfect role model for all of all times for humanity for you know and that is where the problem is. If you just look at him as a typical warlord from the 7th century who had a child wife and whatever that's he's like a typical guy from the 7th century that did yeah. this you know what I'm saying but yeah, yeah. like Genghis Khan or whatever but like if you want him yeah. to be the best example of all humanity then why would he do that because that's yeah. you know there's going to come a time where humanity is going to say whoa this is bad so exactly. that you know so that's how i see it I, I i don't like to use the word pedophile because it's it's a bit of a um, you know you're kind of like projecting you know this kind of new term back onto their age where i think if he was truly a pedophile he would have had more than one child bride he just had one yeah. and the rest yeah. of his wives were you know i'm not saying they were like in the 50s or 40s so they were pretty young i mean hafsa was pretty young but they yeah. were like you know maybe 16 some of them were 20 in the 20s and yeah, yeah, the yeah. fact that if he with the power that he had and the unlimited access to marry whoever he wanted including zainab which was completely yeah. taboo in that society never mind marrying a child marrying a child nobody even blinked but marrying your 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 adopted son's your son's ex-wife that was really bad yeah, that's, and, he yeah. did and he still did it he still did it he still managed to do it and, yeah. and he didn't care right he's like yeah that's also that another thing about yeah. prophet muhammad that i came to aware but i forgot to mention in my this my previous discussion go on yeah so, you know, so yeah yeah like you know what you just mentioned about him marrying his adopted son's mother is that, is that? Uh, ex-wife yeah. ex-wife like, ex-wife yeah yeah so that's well, another wife and then she became ex-wife i guess yeah. yeah 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 so that's another reason for me to not like him anymore <laughs> and not think of him in the very high regards yeah yeah so so all of these things came to a culmination um yeah and one day you just decided to leave islam or what happened there? few few weeks ago i i after watching countless of videos on critics of islam like the like david wood and uh apostate Pro prophet because i was having really really strong doubt and i didn't know what to do and islam it's just very getting really confusing so i want to hear different opinions from free thinkers not just muslims because obviously you know they're gonna deny they're not gonna you know they and they don't know it and half of muslims don't even know as much about islam as david and a Paul state prophet so i look into them and then i started to came up with conclusions from there because they don't lie about islam they actually study islam they don't just take sources out from quran and just like oh you know hey this is quran this this is what it says in the hadith in the quran they actually put it off from actual quote from quran they're not making up at all i used to think that they're making up especially david where he was <laughs> someone that i truly disliked when i was <laughs> hardcore practicing muslim yeah. but now i actually find him to be the other way around like this guy actually knows about islam than most of muslims and how i was deceived by so many many muslim scholars such as secure <laughs> and, oh yes yeah 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 like he there's just so many flaws that david point out about this guy it's like, oh my God, I was a follower of some guy who deceives people. So all these combinations, all these new information that I hear about Islam is what makes me to just make my mind like, you know, Islam is bad. Islam is inherently violent. And especially if you look into chapter nine, Surah al Tawbah, the most chapter, most violent chapter of Quran, too. So Azab? No. Atoba, Toba. Oh, Toba, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Surah nine. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is basically what I came to a conclusion after hearing multiple of critiques about Islam and how and how Islam is just not adopting to modern times, you know. And even if it, even if, like I said earlier, even if it went through Reformation, it's just not going to change what the Prophet did, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what I this is what came to my conclusion. Like, you know, Islam is I'm leaving Islam basically. So, um, how do you feel about that? Like, are your friends Muslim? Do you have Muslim friends? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of my friends are Muslim, like I said, and 
they're more of a holding on to Islam as an identity rather to actually focus on its practice. Some are, some aren't, but even then I don't they're discouraged from questioning and discouraged and from reading Quran in English or whatever language they speak. So it doesn't they're not really reading Quran and the source and hadith. Most most of them just follow Islam because their parents are following Islam. Like that. And to be honest, they they don't even follow Islamic teachings as well. A lot of them they eat nonzabihami and they still listen to music. A lot of them are artists, music, and basically just like normal human beings, right? They're not really like someone who's stuck with religions. So again, it's their choice. So, but this is what it was said to them. You know, if you can't follow a religion, and I know that this religion has a lot of different flaws and different things that are just not needed anymore, you might as well just consider leaving it, you know? And it doesn't, Islam held you back from achieving your potentials, right? Because you have to worry, oh, if I become a musician, does it, is it okay for Islam to be a musician? Is it okay for Islam to be this, be that, be this, be that, you know? And you can't even work in a bank as well because interest is obviously haram, yeah? And then, I was worried, you know, hey, if interest is around, then how would I ever be able to buy a house? I have to worry about, you know, this and that. And then that was also one of the reasons, actually, that came up with my mind. It's like, why doesn't Islam allow interest? And then, yeah, this was like, this is confusing. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it's just, it's quite a question. Why, some what's the big deal with interest right? in Islam? Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, yep. just some of the practices in Islam is just, it's very outdated, you know, and it's, it's ridiculous. Colin David mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of outdated practices in Islam, uh, a lot of values that uh, honestly we don't need anymore. Um, or we shouldn't have, you know, the whole thing about child marriage. I mean, we why are we even having debates about these things? The whole idea of magic being a real thing, sorcery and magic and superstitions like evil eye. And, you know, in, in the 21st century, like, we, we know these things are not real. It's yet we still have these vestiges from, you know, ancient times that people take far too seriously. And unfortunately, yeah. they, you know, they continue to burden us as a society, as a humanity. Yeah, as humanity. exactly. And then they're not. And then the, the, the other thing is, like I was mentioned, I, I keep mentioning, they're not allowed to question. And that's not a good thing, because if you're not allowed to question, then basically you're just blindly following. You're not really mm -hmm. you're thinking critically, you know. And to me, that's really important. I've learned this from English class, that critical thinking is very important. So I guess that sort of helped me from what I've learned from English. I took that critical thinking knowledge and I applied it on my faith. Yeah, because I'm not really following 100%. So I was able to think critically. Whereas people who are just, they're too scared to tell often, you know, so they just secretly not practicing Islam. Mm. Like that's what a lot of my friends are. At least what I've seen, what they're doing, they're not really practicing Islam. They're just, you know, I actually, yeah. I actually used to think that a lot of people are closeted ex-Muslims. Definitely there's a lot, especially nowadays, there's a lot of closeted ex-Muslims. But like, there's this weird type of Muslim that you find, which is um, they don't practice Islam, mm -hmm. but they still believe in it. Now, this is, a, to me, I find that weird. Now, I'll give you an example. I actually had a cousin that was not practicing, you know, I think he used to drink alcohol and party and all that, and he was Muslim. When I converted from Ismaili to Sunni and I had a big beard and I was praying five times yeah. a day, he looked up to me and he was like, Mashallah, you are the best. I want to be like you one day. You I know? actually got that too. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. here's the thing. When I left Islam, I told him, I thought he'd be like, because he doesn't practice, right? And yeah. I thought he would be like, oh, that's, you know, maybe maybe Islam's not true, actually, right? Because if you left Islam and, you know, you actually converted to it after analyzing it and whatever, and now you, you have seen that it's false, 
I thought he would be like, yeah, Islam's false too. But he was like disappointed. He was like, yeah. and even my other, you know, family members um, that are not practicing at all, you know, wearing hijab or whatever, not wearing hijab, I mean, like, they don't yeah. they don't do the first or the last thing about Islam other than maybe the Eid namaz on every one mm -hmm. twice a year they go for Eid prayer. They don't mm -hmm. pray, they don't they fast sometimes, they don't fast sometimes. They're like completely liberal. Yet they were also disappointed that I left Islam. So it's very weird. Like it's just like I don't yeah. understand how people believe this thing. See, yet they don't take it seriously. Problem. You know, this is a big problem. Like you holding on to a you know, religion that has so many, many ridiculous stuff. Yet, when you see other people left, you just become disappointed when you yourself are just not even practicing. Maybe you even find it ridiculous as well. Sometimes those people who find it disappointed to see ex-Muslims, they might even think some of the stuff that is ridiculous. But again, they're not going to tell, tell you because obviously they're forbidden from saying, right? Because if you say that, you're... You're not trusting your full. You're not putting your full trust in Allah, basically. So that's the problem that I find now that I've left. Yeah, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance, I think, in the community. Uh, people, yeah. Muslims, who I think they have doubt, like you said, but I don't think they're quite ex-Muslims. And some sometimes it actually goes the other way. Like these doubting Muslims end up going full hog religious like they just become they feel you know ashamed or they feel sinful for their past lives and they want to make it up i mean even you know to be frank some of the some of the um, the people that become terrorists they were formerly like like non-religious muslims they just like they feel so because they have this guilt because islam teaches you all this guilt and shame about you know all of these things they're doing maybe they have yeah. a girlfriend or maybe they even you know they've hired prostitutes i don't know what they did but like a lot of these people and then they feel guilty about it and then they want to make up for it so they go yeah. and become jihadis right yeah I mean, that's like the worst thing exactly. that can happen is if someone so that's why you know the shame is so it's so harmful you know it's because people don't know how to deal with it people don't know how to how to let go of it and this is one of the problems with with religious teachings like that yeah is because what's the outlet for that i mean Theoretically, all they need to do is ask Allah for forgiveness. They don't need to go and blow themselves up or something. But for some reason, some of them decide to go all the way that way. And maybe there's more to it than that. Maybe it's that combined combined with depression. Right. Maybe they don't, maybe you know some of these people they don't really have any. I mean, frankly speaking, they don't have any meaning in life. They don't have anything going for them in life. They're like isolated. They're like loners. Maybe they don't have friends. Um, yeah. You know, and and the disconnect and a big part of it is a lot of them are disconnected from the community. So mm -hmm. you know, this combined with the religious fanaticism can actually become a very very dangerous cocktail. You know, exactly. Basically, like an indirect way of suicide. Basically, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. that's basically what I'm saying, right? Like a way of yeah. like a get out of Getting jail, away, cut, right? Yeah, like yeah, you, you get you get to kill yourself, and you also get you know all of these beautiful things in the paradise for for doing this so it becomes a sort of escape i think exactly. a very very dangerous like they, especially you know you get a a high rank in jannah like you, you strive and strive for allah basically fight for law right you get like a very high rank in paradise i think they sort of take this as a advantage to get into that position yeah, exactly. It's like the 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 murders are the highest rank right after the prophets, right? So there's yeah. the prophets, which you can't become a prophet, obviously, yeah. uh, because Muhammad's the last <laughs> prophet. And then after yeah. the prophets, there's the shaheed, right? So the shaheed yeah. is like, you know, the sins are forgiven. They're not even questioned about the sins that they did. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, 100%, you know, get into paradise instantly, basically, right? Assuming that you actually were fighting for Allah and not for human causes or fame or whatever like that but yeah it's it's very tempting right if you really believe if yeah. you truly believe that this is real and yeah. um you know this is i mean frankly speaking if if you if we if people actually truly believe why doesn't everyone go all the way why would you just do half ass job because it doesn't exactly. make sense you know what i'm saying if this is true and hell is real and heaven is real why just stick around here and be a bum and don't pray sometimes and pray sometimes? Like this is actually a very good. <laughs> this is actually a very good point you brought up, and then also my 
my ex, my 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 friend who was an ex Ismaili, who also was a strong critique of Islam, and he actually watches your channel and Act Seventeen Apologetic, which is David and uh, Apollo State Prophet, I believe. So this is the uh, this is something that he was telling me. You know, if you can do full fully, then why just focus on half of the religion, right? It's there's no point. You might as well just let it go completely. Mm. You know, so that you live a more productive life. Because, you know, what's the point of, you know, taking like I don't know, five, ten minutes out of your day to pray, and that total is like an out two out one and a half hour. Because you have to pray five times a day, yeah. So yeah, it's like you take an hour of your time and pray. Unless, to, uh, unless you want to, right? And, and that's that's also, thing, right? Blackstone was something that I, I never thought about it. But after I watch Apostate Prophet, that's when I, that's when it started to make more sense, right? If you don't see other, you know, Abrahamic religions like Christianity, I believe Judaism too, they don't pray to a certain directions and facing a, a, a you know, yeah. A, a stone <laughs> or a temple yeah they yeah. pray anytime they want anytime when they feel they want to ask the lord's forget forgiveness or the lord's protection they just pray they can pray anywhere like i'm sitting here right now in front of my desk i can pray if i was a christian i can pray right yeah. now but if you're muslim you, you know you have to pray five times a day facing a not saying that you can pray dua you can pray dua any anywhere but i'm saying like you have to pray five times a day so uh, and it's obligation to pray to a, a stone and that stone was a temple yeah, yeah. so it that was a, it was a meccan um idol. pagan yeah idol exactly and why as muslim you're praying to a idol when islam prohibits idol so yeah, that's what so... really come to my mind like see yeah that's that's doesn't make sense if you claim your abrahamic religion and that you only you don't worship anyone else besides god right god is not visible but why are you praying to a a, 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 a temple a former temple <laughs> yeah exactly so so the, the whole thing about the kaaba is one like there's no mention of the kaaba in pre-islamic sources in any way whatsoever so for example like christianity judaism there's no mention of any Kaaba, which is apparently the most important, you know, place of worship of Allah, of God, this, the true God, who, who yeah. is the same God of Abraham. Yeah. Yet we don't hear about, you know, Abraham going and building a Kaaba. Mm -hmm. So what's more likely that this house was already there and Muhammad decided to make it into the house of Allah? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's truly... The, the real first house of worship but then why don't we find any evidence of that why don't we find any references to that like something so important like that and of course there is evidence that this was a pagan house of worship i mean there was we know there was 360 idols according to the story in the kaaba or around the kaaba yeah Muhammad wanted to break them there was also allah was also worshipped so the pre-islamic arabs definitely believed in allah as this high god and they, yeah. they knew about Abraham, they knew about Mary and Jesus and all these things. There was, there was, you know, all of those cultural and religious symbols were there. But yeah. Muhammad is the one that said you need to now, make, he made this part of the official religion that you have to pray towards the Kaaba. Um, not worshipping the Kaaba, but towards the Kaaba, even, you know, as a form of unity or whatever. But again, like, where did this come from? Why don't we find this in the previous religions from the same God? There's a lot of things like that, that, you know, there seems to be a disconnect when it comes to Islam. Um, just mm -hmm. like there's a disconnect when it comes to Christianity and Judaism, like Jews would say a lot of the things in Christianity don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Christ Christians have thrown away all of the rules, right? Because of Paul, mm -hmm. Paul said, you don't need to implement the letter of the law anymore because yeah. Jesus fulfilled the law. So Jews yeah. are like, what? No, we still need to, right? And we still need to do yeah. all of these things. We still need to eat kosher. We can't eat pigs. Christians are like, oh, we eat pigs now. Uh, Jews are like... So there's a disconnect. And then with Islam, there's another disconnect because then you have all of these new things that Muhammad claims are always there, yet they weren't always there. They're like new, right? They're coming from paganism and they came into Islam. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah th that is a good point. Even the whole thing about facing the Kaaba, it's, it really makes more sense on a flat earth because on yeah. a ball, like if you're, if you're facing, you're facing into space, 
you know mm-hmm. your 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 direction doesn't curve right it's not like yeah. gra- your 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 direction you're facing unless it it follows the rules of gravity like yeah. a cannonball it would go around in a circle right. towards the kaaba <laughs> but i mean it's silly like it's on a flat earth it makes sense everybody can face you know like like the kaaba right mm-hmm. but on a round globe you actually when you're facing a certain direction you're actually looking into space right it's not going right. to yeah. around right exactly, so, exactly. yeah and um yeah yeah really really good point that's actually very true so so now um someone's asking where did i get this pagan idea from um you'd have to be a little bit more specific what you mean by pagan idea but like there's a lot of evidence that basically the kaaba and mm-hmm. muhammad's religion and you know he was just following this was so p- people need to understand that at the time of muhammad there was many different things going on in arabia one was there were people called hunafa hanif right monotheists so there were people that were monotheists who claimed to follow some of them claimed to follow abraham there yeah. was jews there was christians and then there was the the polytheists right now even the polytheists they used to believe in allah allah mean the means the high god the the you know the true god or whatever you want to call it but they felt that allah was unapproachable because allah is you know like you can't see allah whatever so they used to make intermediaries because they're like you know allah is a big guy he's too busy to talk, to talk to us so we need we need lesser gods so we can actually see them we can pray to them and they will you know they'll talk to allah first because they're like more like us so they understand the problems we have in our lives and then you know allah he's so disconnected so i mean this is human nature like right? humans always do these things where they try to be logical and like yeah there's a big god but the big god's busy so they will we'll pray to small gods and the small gods and the same thing happens in other like you find uh, you know like for example zeus uh J- sorry jupiter you know like the high gods of the greeks uh the high gods of the romans they they had high gods as well that were like high up unapproachable so they had demigods as well now muhammad he wanted to follow this monotheist trend and so what he did he's like he, i want to get rid of all the small gods we don't need the small god <laughs> and that's the same thing that happened with christianity and judaism judaism there used to be lots of gods mm-hmm. and then you know lo and behold like- yahweh the jehovah became the one god the war god became the one god that they worship to the exclusion of all the other gods and he was the one that if you worship him he will you know he will take care of you and protect you and he was a jealous god he was a jealous god that didn't want you to worship any other god except him so the same i think like, this is humanity like this is what humans do we started off with all of these different ideas of gods and you know nature worship and then we had many gods and eventually we have one god and that's that's how we've evolved the uh, uh, and today yeah. like majority i think of people on the earth are, are monotheists and that's probably and- because um of course the, the monotheist religions also had certain characteristics that made them spread like you know evangel evangel uh, evangelism evangelism yeah 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 exactly and and then of course with islam there's jihad uh, yeah. offensive jihad there's a blasphemy law there's apostasy law so all of these things make the religion spread basically right yeah, which is another another thing that i i find this religion to be very different from other religion um also was the spread by the sword basically you know you whenever muslims after i think 150 years after prophet muhammad was gone his companions or his followers was able to conquer a lot of places and that was through basically well not directly sword but it ultimately ends with the sword so they were giving a con- um choice you can say shahada or you have to pay jizya but if you refuse to pay jizya then yeah that's when swords come in so how does this become so now when when you look at that when you look at what muhammad taught you, when you tell the people to accept islam if they don't accept islam make them pay a tax it seems like the whole thing is about money because if you if you convert to islam then you send the zakat money back to the to the baitul mal the treasury right so mm-hmm. the tax collectors come from the central government of the the muslim empire the caliph the caliph sends the tax collectors to get the money if you're not muslim mm-hmm. then you pay jizya this whole thing is about money money and power and the th- interesting thing is um the interesting thing is that when muhammad died 
they a lot of the Arab tribes they're like we're not going to pay zakat anymore we only we're only going to pay we only pay to muhammad we're not going to pay anymore and abu Bakr had to fight them in order to get them to pay the the yeah. the zakat money like zakat nowadays people think of it as it's just like it's for the poor and this and that but like apparently back then it was like important enough to kill people <laughs> like kill muslims <laughs> these guys were muslim except they didn't want to pay zakat and he's like i'm gonna fight them whether they give up on salah or whether they give up on zakat, basically he's gonna fight them for money. This is Islam right here. Like this is the this is the best yes. companion. These are the companions of Allah, and the companions of Muhammad, the ones that Allah said He's most pleased with. Like killing and people for zakat. I thought zakat is is you'd be punished for it if you don't pay your zakat on the day of judgment. Why do you have to kill people for that? Exactly. So again, <laughs> like the point that I made early, this is not Allah's word at all. <laughs> like I was saying, Allah, if Allah is God, like universe, like this is Arabic term for God, but the God, that God is a universal God, God for everyone, whoever believes in God. So how can a universally loved, un, uncreated, on no ending eternal uh, force will allow such kind of immoral act, when, especially when it's a head of a religion, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, you don't find that in other religions, yeah. So Islam is very unique and very not very different from other religion in a lot of sense. Mm. Islam is is different in from other religions, um, but even like Christianity did have did have an unholy alliance with the government for the longest time, which is why we I think we need secularism. When the when the religion you know creeps into the government. When you have theocracy, uh, you end up with things like, you know, witches being burned and, you know, the, Inqu the Spanish Inquisition, um, you know, where they, they killed a bunch of Jews and Muslims. And, you know, there was a whole crusades thing. So, you know, it's hard. It's true that, you know, to come to that is more is more difficult from Christianity um, compared to Islam, where the concept of jihad and it's right there in the holy book and not only that the holy book is, is supposed to be for all times so it makes it even more a part of the religion and it makes it even harder for people to get rid of it but as you know with christianity and it's not really like i don't even know fundamental of yeah christianity. The, the crusade was just I, it was started by someone who was more of the a pope, wanted right? to have a power the pope yeah yeah or basically like they want power yeah. yeah, well, they wanted to capture Jerusalem, right? I mean, the, the idea mm -hmm. was to get back to Holy Land. Mm -hmm. And um, again, anytime you miss, um, anytime you mix religion and uh, politics, I think it's a bad thing. I think in general, Christianity and Judaism and all of these religions, I think they have the bad parts and the good parts. But when you have secularism, then you at least have some separation and you don't get, you know, the problem I think with religion is when religion, like there's a there's an interesting meme I've seen, which I, I really like, um, which is about, there's, there's, two, there's uh, two guys sitting on a bench eating ice cream and some guy comes up and says, my religion says you can't eat ice cream, right? So the guy's like, so don't eat ice cream. <laughs> like, okay, you can't eat ice cream, then don't eat ice cream. Like, yeah. leave us alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, you know, it's like, it's like the problem with religion is 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 when it it oversteps and it starts to impose itself on on my my personal space. Mike, I have my rights. If I want to eat pork. I mean, I don't really care too much about pork, but I'll eat it. I mean, whatever you have, you shouldn't stop me. I mean, frankly speaking, I think none of us should be eating meat. If that's a totally different story, I think it's better not to eat meat. But like, it should be a personal decision, right? It shouldn't be yeah. like force other people to, like in in India, you have this like thing with beef. Mm -hmm. Beef, you cannot eat beef. If you eat, if you're a Muslim, and they even think you're like killing cows or you know selling cows, you will you will be like. I mean, there's examples of people yeah. that were like brutally killed because they were accused of, you know, like selling beef, Muslims, like, because they know Muslims yeah. eat beef. 
but they don't eat yeah. beef, right? They don't eat beef. They so Muslims as a workaround in India, what they've done is they're selling buffalo meat because buffaloes are not holy, only the the cows, uh, the, the milk cows or whatever, right? Yeah. So I mean that's that's a problem. If you don't want to eat meat and you're Hindu, don't eat meat. I'm sorry, whatever. Don't yeah. eat beef. It's up to you. But don't don't expect other people to to bow down to your religious belief, which is personal to you, right? So mm -hmm. that's you know that's I think that's a problem. But yeah, you're right. In today's world, Islam does cause a very it is a very unique and uh, special problem in many ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, exactly the uh, point about Hinduism that you brought up, um, and Buddhism. I think they're also encouraged to eat vegans, be a vegans. Yeah. Buddhism, yeah, sort of influence from Hinduism. So, um, they encourages their followers to eat meat. If vegans cannot eat meat, well, at least, at least vegetarian, right? Because milk is okay, cheese is okay, and stuff like that, right? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is but, okay. It's but even, like Hinduism. Even with Hinduism, I think there's different castes and some of them are allowed to eat meat or something. I don't know the details exactly, but I, I know that yeah. what I've seen is men tend to eat meat, but not women. I don't know why. And um, yeah. once a week in or something. Buddhism, yeah, no. Uh, Buddhism, we don't. there's no caste in uh, Buddhism. That's how it got sort of offshoot from Hinduism because Buddha was objecting the system, the caste system. So he sort of like disagree with Hinduism. Mm -hmm. but a lot of concepts are very similar, like from Hinduism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to make an appeal uh, to those of you uh, who are just joining now or you just recently joined. I'm speaking to Abdul. Abdul is a Taiwanese Muslim convert who is now ex-Muslim. Uh, he converted to Islam about, you know, after... I guess, reading the Quran, talking to Muslims and going to the mosque and he actually fasted and he prayed five times a day, did the whole thing. And then as he started to learn more about Islam, he decided to leave Islam when he found out it was false. So here I am, we're having this conversation and it's been a great conversation. For those of you who are new to the channel, please subscribe. Thumbs up to this video as well so that YouTube knows to share it with other people. Also, to those of you who are supporting me, Solitary Emmy, uh, Food and Religion, all of my uh, patrons and all of the members, new members as well, P and the other, and the rest of you, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, and those of you who are new here, please consider joining the channel um, on YouTube. It's for as little as two dollars a month on Patreon. You can set a custom amount. The money does help. The support does help. Um, people don't realize how much time goes into this. How much money goes into this. To, uh, to fix the lag issue that I was having on the videos. I had to spend almost $500 to upgrade my computer with a new video card and a video capture card. These things don't come cheap. Um, but I think everything is pretty set now. Now it's just the monthly fees and of course, you know, compensation for the amount of time that I have to put into. So please do consider supporting the channel financially. If you cannot support the channel financially, um, you can always help out by giving by contributing subtitles. Uh, details are on my support page, abdullahsamir.com slash support. So please do consider joining the channel or supporting it in any way that you can. Now, Abdul, I want to talk about where you're going to go from here. So now you've left Islam. What do you have to do now? You, are you going to tell your Muslim friends or you, you probably just not going to tell them yet, I guess. And if they ask you, did you leave Islam? Like, how are you going to deal with that? Like, what's it's going to be challenging because most of your friends are Muslim, like you said, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so for now, as of now, I will not announce officially. I will just keep it quiet. But and I'm just going to let time speak itself. And if anyone finds out, I'll just tell them, hey, um, I know it's disappointing and I know it's not a very good news. But yes, I if they ask me, I will tell them I have indeed left, left Islam. And I'll just give them the reason. And then I'll just tell them, you, you, you shouldn't either, but I will leave it up to you as a personal choice. But I will give them reason as to why they should also leave. And then, you know, if I lose a friend or anything, I don't want to. And it's hard, but, you know, I just want to let truth speak itself, you know, like I'd rather stand my ground. Yeah, basically that's what I would do. It's 
it's, it's again it's hard to lose friend but that's just yeah. how it is sometimes yeah and you know that's when you find out and you... i hope they really sorry, I, sorry go ahead, but go ahead, i go really ahead. hope they 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 will understand and you know respect my decision basically you you get to find out where your true friends are when you leave islam yeah. because the people that don't care about you and care more about your religious beliefs or the two indoctrinated they will be like i don't want to be friends with you anymore people that are actually care about you will not abandon you just because or cut you off just because you know you don't follow the religion anymore the thing i find is that unfortunately some people um you know they they just there's, there's just too much in the matrix they're just too brainwashed by this religion and the belief system that they're not able to to continue being friends with people that are not muslim and again when you talk about islam being unique i i feel like it's not totally unique to islam because i've heard the same thing from ex jehovah's witnesses and ex mormons but like i i've seen that like christians tend to be more tolerant to people that doubt or disbelieve jews are like way more taller in general i mean at least in, in canada where i am like what i've heard is people go to the people even go to the jewish um temp temple and they're like i don't i don't really believe and they're like yeah 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 you're still jewish you're still jewish you, you know it's, it's like whatever but like it's not like that in islam it's, it's not like, like uh, jewish is more like a also it could also be an ethnic yeah. identity yeah i was read the religion because if you look at half of the people in hollywood or the wall street industry and give you a biggest example bernie sanders uh -huh. he's jew yeah but he's not practicing judaism or he's not even part of judaism religion in, in fact so yeah yeah, yeah and, i can uh, see what i can see what you're talking about yeah and like uh, mark straight is saying you know try to find new groups of people and that's a very good advice because um unfortunately when you make relationships with people based on religion that becomes a common bond and then it becomes very difficult for them to see you in a different way right like whereas when you have friendships based on like you know like you you become friends based on a common interest like biking or camping or you know you just like become friends for video games or something else you're not necessarily they don't really they're not going to leave, leave you because you no longer play the game or something it's like you know what i mean but the religion thing it becomes almost like a cult and that's that's why sometimes people say islam is like a cult because it becomes i, I actually agree <laughs> it becomes like a cult right, in some ways because you yeah. can't you can't leave it that easily you have all of these things and you have to this is also something that i think about a lot when i think about my muslim friends and um i feel like a lot of them are just friends with me for religion i'm not saying that it's true but this is my personal feeling like guys are you you're friends with me but uh are you just friends with me for religion or is it because we really have something we can have bond together or are you just friends with me because i've converted to islam I think about that a lot, and then I was just thinking, this is ridiculous. If this is, if that's the case, then this is really ridiculous. Because the moment that I leave this, just leave Islam, you guys will just basically abandon me. I like, yeah. I, I was also uh, warned by my uh, my friend, my uh, my ex my okay. ex smiley friend. Yeah, <laughs> he told me about this as well when I was a practicing Muslim. He's like, you know, this is a cult. If you leave. The religion those people will not no longer associate with you or not have too much to do with you basically mm. so yeah the point that you brought up is very good and yeah it's just it's becoming cold in this situation I, it is actually <laughs> and I, I think again um i've i've come to realize that it's not a cult for everybody because for example those liberal muslim friends the ones that drink and maybe they don't drink they don't have to drink i don't mean they i don't mean only the ones that drink i mean the ones that don't take the religion seriously yeah they have non muslim friends they're like if you tell them you know islam says these things they'll be like what no islam doesn't say this islam doesn't say you can have slaves no 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 what are you talking about muhammad killed all those people benu kuraiz no he didn't you're making this up you're a liar like they they're like shocked if you bring up the things the actual evidence from islam history because yeah. 
that's not what Islam is to them. To them, it's like you said, it's like an identity. It's like some sort of cultural heritage. It's like, you know, a pick and choose kind of Islam, like a watered <laughs> down, you know, identity thing. Exactly. So, but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, even these people get offended when you attack Islam because they're like, I they, will they see the reason why. Attack. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's what I want, wanted to, you know, to tell my friends if they, or anyone that knows me, that I'm that I love Islam. You rather holding on to a, an identity like this, and when you not even practicing, and then when you get called out, or what your religion, your identity, suppose get called out, you just deny it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, and. Um... I, I do think that like if someone like if I meet a Muslim, the last yeah. thing I'm gonna bring up with them is um, you know, Islam. Like I don't care. Like it's I don't like to talk about this in real I mean I, I love talking about this. Obviously, that's why I have a YouTube channel, but mm -hmm. like I'll wait for them to bring it up if they wanna discuss it. I'm not like so your religion is false. You know that, right? Like I don't go around talking like that in real life. Personally, yeah. I have my outlet, which is my act my online activism. So if I have Muslim friends, which I have, a, I still have a few Muslim friends. We don't talk about stuff like that. We talk about other things. We talk about Bitcoin. We talk about technology. <laughs> we talk about, we yeah. talk about things that are like, and, and we. More of a, a ordinary conversation. Yeah. And some, sometimes yeah. we talk about Islam, but, but we've, we've got to the point of agreeing to disagree. Because I know, like, no matter what I tell them, they're not going to agree with it. And they know they're not going to convince me. So we're at a stalemate. So I'm like, yeah, you can live your life as a Muslim. You know, it doesn't bother me. I'm uh, obviously not Muslim, but that doesn't matter, right? Eh? Um, the activism is the activism. And, you know, for the people that, that don't know that you left Islam, you don't have to tell them. Like, you don't have to volunteer that information. I have, I even have Muslim neighbors, like, next door. They live next door. And they saw us. They thought I was Muslim. Oh, and they say salam to me. I say welcome salam, whatever. And then you know, I I told them at one point. I, I the way I do it is I say I'm not religious. That's what I say. And that's if someone says you're not religious, that's not like they don't take offense at that. They're like, okay, he's not religious. I don't take it seriously. And then you know, as time went on, I actually told them like I don't really believe in this stuff. It's not just not religious. I don't believe in it. But of course, I don't tell them about my YouTube channel. There has to be some personal security in my life too. I can't just go telling Muslims where I live because I don't know how they will use that information against me. Unfortunately, exactly. in this case, I can't trust any Muslim. Unfortunately, I'm like sorry to say I cannot trust any Muslim with this information because it's been used against me before. So I like people try to call up my office and get me fired. So yeah, yeah. nobody tried to kill Definitely. me, thankfully. Nobody's attacked me, but I mean, I, I have to be careful. It's unfortunate, but that's what it is. So, and I don't know which Muslim is suddenly gonna like try to, you know, like dox me or something like that. So, it is what it is, unfortunately. But like, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, you left Islam, you don't have to tell anybody. They don't like whatever. If you want to tell them, you can tell them, but you don't have to. And nothing will, nothing will happen if you don't. It's up to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that's my advice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and of course, sure. if you want to help them, you know, like I had, I had a you know, two guys call um, a conversation with two guys yesterday, two ex-Muslims. And one of them, he left Islam and he told his friend, but he waited until his friend was kind of ready to tell him. And before that, he would just ask him questions. He would say, I have a friend who was asking me this. What do you think about this? And, and so he kind of, you know, paved the way for the guy to start wondering some of the things and questioning until eventually he decided like he's just going to tell his friend and he doesn't care what happens. Uh, but he didn't just drop the bomb right at the beginning and and give an excuse to his friend to cut him off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's basically. It. Do you wanna do you wanna say anything else? Do you wanna discuss anything else before we end the conversation? Because we've I've taken a lot of your time and thank you so much oh, for no. doing this. Yeah, absolutely, no problem, pleasure. <laughs> yeah, this has it's, been great it's good to have a discussion for sure. I wanted to talk to people for sure. Talk to you specifically. Uh, well, before I reach my conclusion, I just want to briefly uh, sort of share with people about my current spiritual status. Now I am um, more or so towards following my ancestral religion, my original, or if you consider Buddhism as a philosophy or maybe a religion, I'm, I don't know what you, 
maybe it's both. So I am more of that. But again, I'm not really deep dive into it, but I do go to Taoist temple and ask my masters to predict my future. So I still have beliefs about supernatural beings as I was brought up to believe in that really, really strongly and firmly believing it. Now I was just, I don't take it for granted. So I, I take it and I think about it and I think critically, you know, is this master, whatever he's saying, is it really actual evidence or is it just something to consider about, but don't take it too literally and just for, it's like an insurance basically. I, I just basically think about, I think about this and I also believe in it at the same time. So just in the middle, basically. So that's my spiritual status and oh, yeah. just kind of want to share with. Do you believe in God? People. Yes, I do. I think that's a good approach to take, like just be a little bit skeptical. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think skepticism is one of the best things that we have. And, you know, if you want to be religious, go back to, your, you know, in, in, in some ways it makes the most sense to go by what you've kind of grew up in because you have that connection and, and there's no there's no need yeah. to throw out the whole thing, right? Yeah. Early, unless you want to. Uh, but if you don't want to, that's fine too. Right? I mean, and whatever works best for you in your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the another thing about Buddhism and Taoism is that it doesn't have a lot, it doesn't, or actually it doesn't have any restrictions on what you can do, what you can do is more about discovering yourself through meditation. You find enlightenment through meditation, basically. You're basically following teachings of Siddhartha Gautama to enlighten yourself. So Buddhism is, I think it will be really easy. Even an atheist people can practice at some, even it's even suitable for atheists, you know, because they don't really force, you know, you don't pray, like you don't have to go to temple a certain day, like in Abrahamic religions, Christian, Jews, and Muslims. So the Dharmic faith, that's what they call Buddhism, Dharmic faith. And Taoism is Eastern faith. So Eastern faith, like, yeah, you know, you. You just focused on yourself, discovering yourself through meditation and peaceful meditation. Have you heard of Qigong? It's mm -hmm. like a, um, a martial arts sort of, so it sort of connects with culture. So this is another good thing that I, I think Buddhism and Taoism is good for humanity. And it gives you a lot of thinking abilities, like critical skeptic and skepticism thinking abilities as well. So that's just wanted to update about Buddhism and share a little bit about Buddhism, basically. Mm. Oh yeah, this looks cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah, is, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely like meditation. I think it's a great, great thing. Mindfulness. Um, if you're interested in an atheist that actually talks about that, check out Sam Hills. Um, yeah. He definitely, I love him, and I love what he's what he's doing there with with the whole mindfulness thing. So this is great. Yeah. Thanks for this. Thanks for the call. Yeah. Um, thank you to everyone who donated and joined the channel as well. And to all my pa patrons and supporters and for all of you who are here today to, um, to keep this thing going and, um, keep, you know, keep sharing these videos and let's get this message out to more people. Um, Abdul, there was a comment in the chat a couple of times saying that you should do this in Taiwanese. You should make a video in Taiwanese to help people with, okay. you know, with, I don't know how many Muslims there are in Taiwan, and I don't know how, how effective the Dawah is over there. Yeah, uh, well, it's not very strong presence, but you do get a small community of uh, Chinese, a Taiwanese Muslim originally who came from uh, mainland China when uh, the government of Taiwan right now was separating from mainland China. And the Muslims, they came from, with the civil war in China, they came to Taiwan after 1949. Mm, mm, I see, I so see. So the Muslims community from all over China and all over and all the provinces came to Taiwan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, so I, I think that's a good place to end though. Um, yeah. You know, we wish you well and uh, good luck in your, your new life as, a, yeah. as an ex-Muslim um, and you know, <laughs> Uh, Thank you. I hope that uh, everything goes well for you and, uh, you know, the challenges that you have to face in making new friends and maybe telling, you know, some of your friends that you're not Muslim, you know, I hope that goes well for you and I wish you all the Thank best you. and, you know, keep Thank in touch. You. 
keep in touch yeah, on sure. um, you know you, you we connected on instagram i don't check instagram really often but i do check twitter more often than facebook but yeah do keep in touch and we'll we'll hopefully yeah, sure. uh, have another chat one day maybe maybe in the future once you're completely out we can actually do it in video and that would be yeah fun. yeah yeah definitely yeah well i'm definitely looking forward to that and as for everyone else i'm hoping to give you guys more guidance and i will study a little bit more about islam so i can help people furthermore wonderful okay take care my friend bye you too yeah um